awesome. I would like to share with you one of my favorite authors in the entire world, and probably even other worlds that we don't even know about yet. His name is Roald Dahl. Now, Roald Dahl has written so many awesome books, including The Twits, The BFG. Help me out, what did I miss? Charlie. The, the, the Twits. twits. Oh, yeah, the I just said the Twits. Uh, the Charlie, Charlie the Chocolate Factory. The Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. James and the Giant Peach. James the, the Giant, Giant Peach. Peach. He is a favorite amongst all students that I've always had. And you know what? He should be every teacher's bestest friend because kids generally love his books. And you will too. So today I'm going to share with you one of my absolute favorites and definitely a popular one amongst my students, The Witches. Now here to introduce The Witches are actual students of mine. Inaya and Mary Ange. Hello, I'm Mary Ange and I'm Inaya. And we're here to give you a brief summary on the story The Witches by Roald Dahl. One day a little boy goes to live with his grandma and every night she tells some stories about witches. She tells him how to spot a witch. The ways to find a witch are their spit is blue. They have a little fire in their eyes instead of pupils. They always wear gloves because they have claws. They eat children. Ew, that's nasty. No toes, just square nubs. Their nose holes are pink and curvy like seashells. The, the cleaner you are, the more that they can smell you. Really? Yeah. Take that, parents. Stay dirty, kids. The boy goes to England and finds himself at a witch meeting in a hotel. What, what will, will happen, happen next? Frizzled like a fritter. All the women, or rather the witches, were now sitting motionless in their chairs and staring as though hypnotized at somebody who had suddenly appeared on the platform, that somebody was another woman. The first thing I noticed about this woman was her size. She was tiny, probably no more than four and a half feet tall. She looked quite young. I guessed about 25 or 6. She was very pretty. She had on a, a rather stylish long black dress that reached right to the ground, and she wore black gloves that came up to her elbows. Unlike the others, she wasn't wearing a hat. She didn't look to me like a witch at all, but she couldn't possibly not be one. Otherwise, what on earth was she doing up there on that platform? And why, for heaven's sake, were all the other witches gazing at her with such a mixture of adoration, awe, and fear? Very slowly, the young lady on the platform raised her hands to her face. I saw her gloved fingers unhooking something behind her ears, and then, then she caught hold of her cheeks and lifted her face clean away! The whole of that pretty face came away in her hands! It was a mask, and she took off the mask. She turned sideways and placed it carefully upon a small table nearby, and when she turned around again and faced us, I very nearly screamed out loud. <gasps> the face of hers was the most frightful and frightening thing I had ever seen. Just looking at it gave me the shakes all over. It was so crumpled and wizened, so shrunken and shriveled, it looked as though it had become pickled in vinegar. It was a fearsome and ghastly sight. There was something terribly wrong with it, something foul and putrid and decayed. It seemed quite literally to be rotting away at the edges, and in the middle of the face, around the mouth and cheeks, I could see the skin all cankered and worm-eaten, as though maggots were working away in there. Ew. There are times when something is so frightful you become mesmerized by it and can't look away. I was like that now. I was transfixed. I was numbed. I was magnetized by the sheer horror of this woman's features. But there was more to it than that. There was a look of serpents in those eyes of hers as they flashed around the audience. I knew immediately, of course, that this was none other than the Grand High Witch herself. I knew also why she had worn a mask. She could never have moved around in public, let alone book in at a hotel with a real face. Everyone who saw her would have run away screaming. The doors! shouted the Grand High Witch in a voice that filled the room and bounced around the walls. Are they chained and bolted? The doors are chained and bolted, your grandness, answered a voice in the audience. The brilliant snake's eyes that were set so deep in that dreadful, rotting, worm-eaten face glared unblinkingly at the witches who sat facing her. You may remove your gloves, she shouted. Her voice, I noticed, had that same hard metallic quality as the voice of the witch I had met under the conquered tree, only it was far louder and much, 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 much harsher. It rasped, it grated, it snarled. It scraped, it shrieked, and it growled. Everyone in the room was peeling off her gloves. I was watching the hands of those in the back row. I wanted very much to see what their fingers looked like and whether my grandmother had been right. Ah, yes, I could see several of them now. I could see the brown claws curving over the tips of the fingers. They were about two inches long, those claws, and 
sharp at the ends. You may remove your shoes, barked the Grand Eye Witch. I heard a sigh of relief going up from all the witches in the room as they kicked off their narrow, high-heeled shoes, and then I got a glimpse under the chairs of several pairs of stockinged feet, square and completely toeless. Revolting they were, as though the to toes had been sliced away from the feet with a carving knife. You may remove your wigs, snarled the Grand High Witch. She had a peculiar way of speaking. There was some sort of foreign accent there, something harsh and guttural, and she seemed to have trouble pronouncing the letter W. As well as that, she did something funny with the letter R. She would roll it round and round her mouth like a piece of hot pork crackling before spitting it out. Remove your wigs! And get some fresh air into your spotty scalps, she shouted. And another sigh of relief arose from the audience as all the hands went up to the heads, and all the wigs with the hats still on them were lifted away. There now appeared in front of me row upon row of bald female heads, a sea of naked scalps, every one of them red and itchy looking from being rubbed by the linings of the wigs. I simply cannot tell you how awful they were. And somehow the whole sight was made more grotesque because underneath those frightful scab scabby bald heads, the bodies were dressed in fashionable and rather pretty clothes. It was monstrous. It was unnatural. Oh heavens, I thought. Oh help. Oh Lord, have mercy on me. These foul bald headed females are child killers, every one of them. And here I am imprisoned in the same room and I can't escape. <gasps> At that point, a new and doubly horrifying thought struck me. My grandmother had said that with their special nose holes, they could smell out a child on a pitch black night from right across the other side of the road. Up to now, my grandmother had been right every time. It seemed a certainty, therefore, that one of the witches in the back row was going to sniff me out at any moment, and then the yell of dog's droppings would go up all over the room and I would be cornered like a rat. I knelt on the carpet behind the screen, hardly daring to breathe. Then suddenly I remembered another very important thing my grandmother had told me. The dirtier you are, she had said, the harder it is for a witch to smell you out. How long since I had last had a bath? <laughs> Not for ages. I had my own room in the hotel and my grandmother never bothered with silly things like that. Come to think of it, I don't believe I'd had a bath since we arrived. When I had last washed my hands or face? Certainly not this morning. Not yesterday either. I glanced down at my hands. They were covered with smudge and mud and goodness knows what else besides. So perhaps I had a chance after all. The stink waves couldn't possibly get out through all that dirt. Vitches of England! shouted the Grand High Witch. She herself, I noticed, had not taken off either her wig or her gloves or her shoes. Vitches of England! she yelled. The audience stirred uneasily and sat up straighter in their chairs. Miserable vitches! she yelled. Useless, lazy vitches! Feeble, fribbling vitches! You are a heap of idle, good for nothing, firms! A shudder went through the audience. The Grand High Witch was clearly in an ugly mood, and they knew it. I had a feeling that something awful was going to happen soon. I am having my breakfast this morning, cried the Grand High Witch, and I am looking out of the window at the beach, and what am I seeing? I'm asking you, what am I seeing? I am seeing a revolting sight. I am seeing hundreds, I am seeing thousands of rotten, repulsive little children playing on the sand. It is putting me right off my food. Why have you not got rid of them? She screamed. Why have you not rubbed them all out, these filthy, smelly children? With each word she spoke, flecks of pale blue phlegm shot from her mouth like little bullets. I am asking you why, she screamed. Nobody answered her question. Children smell, she screamed. They stink of the world. We do not want these children around here. The bald heads in the audience all nodded vigorously. One child of is no good to me, the Grand High Witch cried out. Is that the best you can do? We'll do better, murmured the audience. We'll do much, much better. Better is no good either, shrieked the Grand High Witch. I demand maximum results. So here are my orders. My orders are that every single child in this country shall be rubbed out, squashed, squirted, squittered, and frittered before I come here again in one year's time. Do I make myself clear? A great gasp went up from the audience. Everyone gasped. I saw the witches all looking at one another with deeply troubled expressions, and I heard one witch at the end of the front row saying aloud, All of them! We can't possibly wipe out all of them! The Grand High Witch whipped around as though someone had struck a skewer in her bottom. 
Ew. <laughs> Who <laughs> said oh, that? <laughs> Who dares to argue with me? It was you, was it not? She pointed a gloved finger as sharp as a needle at the witch who had spoken. I didn't mean it, your grandness, the witch cried out. I didn't mean to argue, I was just, I was just talking to myself. You dare to argue with me, screamed the Grand High Witch. I was just talking to myself, cried the wretched witch. I swear to your grandness, she began to shake with fear. The Grand High Witch took a quick step forward, and when she spoke again, it was in a voice that made my blood run cold. A stupid feature ends on its back must burn until her bones are black. She screamed, <laughs> No! No! begged the witch in the front row. The Grand High Witch went on. A foolish witch without the brain must sizzle in the fiery flame. Save me! cried the wretched witch in the front row. The Grand High Witch took no notice of her. She spoke again. An idiotic bitch like you must roast upon the barbecue. <laughs> Forgive me, oh your grandness, cried the miserable culprit. I didn't mean it. But the Grand High Witch continued with her terrible recital. A witch who dares to say I'm wrong will not be with us very long. A moment later, a stream of sparks that looked like tiny white-hot metal fillings, filings came shooting out of the Grand High Witch's eyes and flew straight towards the one who had dared to speak. I saw the sparks striking against her and burrowing into her, and she screamed a horrible howling scream. <gasps> <laughs> and a puff of smoke rose up around her. A smell of burning meat filled the room. Mmm, meat. Nobody moved. Like me, they were all watching the smoke, and when it had cleared away, the chair was empty. I caught a glimpse of something wispy white like a little cloud fluttering upwards and disappearing out of the window. A great sigh rose up from the audience. The Grand High Witch glared around the room. I hope nobody else is going to make me cross today, she remarked. There was a deathly silence. Frizzled like a fritter, said the Grand High Witch. Cooked like a carrot. You will never see her again. Now we can get down to business. So that was the chapter entitled Frizzled Like a Fritter from the Witches. And as I'm sure you could tell, this is a very popular book. It's very entertaining. Kids of all ages very much enjoy this book. Roald Dahl is a wonderful author. Give me words to describe the way that he writes this, in this book. Descriptive. Descriptive. Amazing. Amazing. Well written. Well written. Um, clearly detailed. Clearly detailed. Very put together. Very well put together, sure. Really amazingly good. amazing. Amazingly amazing. I think that sums it up perfectly. So if you have not shared Roald Dahl books with your students, I urge you to do so. And students, I urge you to go pick up his books. Because guess what? His books aren't just great. His books are awesome!